What is going on everyone? So today we are going to be looking at leak code number 207. It is called course schedule and I have to say this one is a pretty tricky one. It's 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 working off of some patterns and I think the key to this question is really recognizing the patterns that are that this question is asking. And once you understand that, it's actually not too bad. It, I, I see how this can be solved very, very quickly in like a matter of minutes, just by understanding what this question is really asking. So let's go through it. We'll go through it step by step. Uh, okay, so the prompt. There are a total of num courses you have to take labeled from zero to num courses minus one. Some courses may have prerequisites. For example, if you take course zero, you have to first take course one, which is expressed as a pair zero one given the total number of courses and a list of prerequisite pairs is it possible for you to finish all courses okay so example one we have an input of num courses two and prerequisites of one and zero the output is true there are a total of uh, two courses to take if you take course one you should have finished course zero so it is possible okay so basically what it's saying is that <clears throat> To take course one, we have to take course zero. But because there is nothing in here that, that says anything about course zero, we can assume that we can take course zero without any prerequisites. Here we have the example number two. We have two courses, and we have a prerequisite. To take course one, we have to take a prerequisite for course uh, of, of course zero. But to take course zero, we have to take a prerequisite of course one. And so this is impossible to take because essentially we're getting a cycle. To take one, we have to be able to take zero. And to take zero, we have to be able to take one. So there's no way to enter into this, into this, uh, into this graph, really. And that is really the key to this, is understanding that this is a, a graph problem. And what it's really asking is, is there a cycle in the graph? For this, there's no cycle because there's nothing that we have to take in course zero and so we can take course zero and we can get to course one by going through zero but here there's no way because there is a cycle that's happening here and the other thing that that kind of tripped me up was is it undirected or directed and it is a directed graph and and once once that was understood that this is asking that that we have a directed graph and we want to figure out is there a cycle in this directed graph once that connection is made this problem can be solved very quickly and again if if, uh, if 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 you're not clear on how directed undirected graphs work I highly recommend checking out introduction to algorithms it's a really thick book um, but the graph section is is quite comprehensive and there's a lot of patterns in there that I think are really important to just have down pat. That way when you see these types of problems, you can just pull from those patterns and you don't have to think too much about it. It's really the only thinking that really needs to be done is what pattern is this question asking underneath? So if we're dealing with a graph problem and we are trying to detect a cycle, then we wanna use a depth first search traversal. And we want to turn this input, first thing we want to do is basically turn this input into an adjacency list. So let's go ahead and do that. We can do const build adjacency list. And again, this is it's good to just kind of have these helper functions memorized. That way you don't have to think too much about it. Um, so with the building adjacency list, we're going to have n, which is the length, and then uh, the edges. Okay, and then what we're going to do is we're going to create our adjacency list. So we can do adjacency list, and then this will just be an array of length n. And what we're going to do is set every single one of those edges to an empty array. Okay, so all we're doing is we're creating an empty array of size n and each element in that array we're putting in a brand new array it's not the same array it's a totally new uh, array that's that's linked to a different part in memory and it's important that that the array is that because if you put the same array in every element uh, you'll, you'll get a lot of bugs 
Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're just going to iterate over the edges. So we'll do let edge in edges. Okay, and then what we want to do is we want to pull out our source and destination out of the edge. Okay, and now what we want to do is because this is a directed graph, we just want to set the source to the destination. Now if it was undirected, then we would mirror this. We would, we would have an adjacency list and we would put in our destination to the source. But we don't want to do that because this is a directed graph. And so for this, we just return turn our adjacency list. Okay? So that will that will essentially convert this list of edges into an adjacency list. It'll just go ahead and build that an adjacency list, adjacency list. And if we look here, we can see when we pull out this edge, we're going to basically pull out this 1 and this 0. The 1 here is going to be the source and the destination is going to be this 0. So in the index of 1, uh, of our adjacency list, we're going to go ahead and push in that zero. But the index of zero is going to be an empty array. And so again, we're looking for cycles. So let's just take a look here. We have an input of n equals two. And then our prereqs is going to be Let's take a look here. It's 1 and 0. 1 and 0. Okay. And so what we're doing here is we're creating an array of length 2. So 0, 1. Those will be the indices. And what we're doing is we're going and taking 1 and we're pushing in 0. And then in zero, there's nothing there to push in, so we just have an empty array. And if we look at this as a graph, we can see that there's no, there's no cycle. Because zero goes to nowhere, and one goes to zero, but zero doesn't go anywhere else. So you can see that there's, there's no cycle, and that's really important. For example, the second input here, we see that it's one and zero, and zero and one. So let's just go ahead and refresh this okay so we have n equals 2 and we have an input of prereqs of 0 and 1 and 1 and 0 okay and so all this is, is we have edges here, and we want to create an adjacency list out of this. So here we have our key, essentially, or the index. So we can have 0 and 1. And what this is going to map to is the value. So 0 is going to map to 1. And 1 here is going to map to 0. And so you can see here, we have a cycle. If we go to 0, then this is going to go to 1. And if we go to 1, this is going to go back to 0. And there's no way to enter, enter into this. And so we can't finish all the courses because there's a cycle. OK. So we build our adjacency list. Now what we want to do is we just want to do a depth first search traversal. So we'll just call this has cycle. And we'll do depth first search. And again, this is a, a pattern. So we take in the node, we take in the list, uh, we take in visited. And then this is this is a, a way to check for cycles with um, with depth first search directed graphs. It's it's uh, it's something that you wanna you wanna make sure you understand beforehand, and it's uh, it's basically edge classifications, is 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 what you wanna look at, and you wanna check if there's a back edge, if there is a back edge in a directed graph, that means that there's a cycle. It means that there's a cycle in there if you have a back edge, and 
so you want to have uh, basically a variable that um, stores the arrival and departure. And this is a timestamp. So every time we, we implement, we hit this depth first search uh, function, we want to increment the arrival. So arrive at node, increment that. We want to set visited to true of node true. Okay. And then when we when we go through the entire we traverse the entire um, graph from that particular node, we want to depart. We want to uh, increment the depart. And again, if, if you're not familiar with this, it's good to check out introduction algorithms. They, they go really in depth on edge classifications, directed versus undirected graphs, and, and how to check for cycles, and just, just common things that you see that a lot of these questions kind of are asking underneath the hood. And I think it's really important because once you understand how to detect these patterns, then a lot of these questions aren't really that difficult. You can just apply a very uh, basic template that you can have somewhat memorized. Okay, and we just return. We want to, if we go through all of this, we want to return false. Okay, and now we are just, we're just basically implementing uh, a very classic depth first search. Um, so we'll do let neighbor of adjacency list node. Okay, if not visited. neighbor, then we're going to set visited of neighbor to true. Okay. And what we want to do now is we want to basically call our recursive call, but we want to check, is there a cycle? Search, and we'll put in our neighbor. We're traversing from the neighbor. visited, arrive, depart, and if it has a cycle, we return true. Okay. Now, if, if we have not visited, we have to check, is the departure, did it depart? Okay, so if depart at neighbor, equals zero, then we also want to return true. What we're basically checking here is if there's a back edge. Okay. And now we just write our main function. So first, again, this is following a very uh, basic template, and we're just going to build our graph. So const adjacency list is going to be build. List and we're gonna put in our num courses prerequisites and then we want to create our visited um, uh, object and we want to have our arrive it's gonna be an array Courses and our and we're going to set each one of these to zero. Okay. Whoops. And we're going to do the same exact thing for depart. And now we we again we just do a very common pattern here of doing a depth first search algorithm graph traversal. We do let vertex equals zero, adjacency where vertex is less than adjacency list dot length, vertex plus plus. And we're going to check if this is visited at vertex. If it's not visited, then we're going to go ahead and check if this 
if we traverse from this node, from this vertex, vertex node, uh, is there a cycle? As cycle depth first search, and we're going to start with our vertex, our adjacency list, our visited, arrive, and depart. And if there's a cycle, then that means it's false. That means we cannot finish finish all those courses. And if there's not a cycle, then we return true. Okay, and that's it. It's it's not too bad. I mean, one all we got to really figure out with this question is, is there a cycle? And if there's a cycle, then that means we cannot finish all these courses. And if there's not a cycle, that means we can. And we have to also recognize that we're dealing with a, a, a directed graph, a directed graph, and we're just checking for cycles. Okay, so let's run this. Oh, I need to sign in. Uh, let's see here. Um, let's see, I can do that. Okay, let's go ahead and run this. And yeah, and we have success. And so that's it. Um, it's not too bad. It's a good question to know. You can see that it's asked at Amazon, Facebook, ByteDance, Bloomberg. And I had trouble with this question when I first encountered it. Even when I looked at the solution, I still had a lot of issues getting my head around this. And I think if, you, if, if you're not familiar with breadth first search, depth first search, cyclic versus acyclic graphs, this can be a tricky one and and i think one of the things that that is really important is when you're solving these lead code problems to really find the pattern F solving these problems just as an island or independently can really be exhaustive because there's so many of these problems but many of them are following the same underlying pattern and so once those patterns can be recognized you don't have to think too much you can just solve these really really quickly and quite effectively so that is Lead Code 207. I hope you liked it, and I'll see you on the next one.